Welcome to my tiebreak video guide for beginners. This video is perfect for those of you who purchased the game and want to understand the controls and mechanics better. This guide is also great for those of you who consider buying the game, so you can learn what to expect from gameplay mechanics before diving in. By the end of this video, you should understand the basic controls in tiebreak. You will also learn what each shot type does, plus why and when you should use it. We'll also discuss gameplay mechanics that are specific to tiebreak, like triggers and powering up your shots. So sit back, relax, and let's learn how to play tiebreak. First, the topspin. Topspin is the default shot type in tiebreak. To perform a topspin, you need to hold circle or B button on your controller. You should use topspin as your go-to shot type as it's the safest option for returning any type of opponent's shot. Whether they played slice, a drop shot close to the net or an aggressive flat shot, responding with topspin maximizes your chances for returning the ball successfully. When the ball is hit with a topspin, it will have a higher curvy trajectory and will bounce farther. And as a result, topspin pushes your opponent away from the baseline. It also allows you to play the ball safely through the high points of the net that are located on the sides. And lastly, topspin enables tight angles that are difficult to reach otherwise. Next up, we've got slice. Slices are done with square or X button. This shot type is your defensive tool. Slice travels slower and bounces lower. The slower part helps you by giving more time to reposition back to optimal location in case you are pushed hard by your opponent. But that's not all. In tiebreak, the low bounce is also an important factor since the ball height impacts the shot accuracy. As a result, if you play slice and the opponent tries to return it with a strong flat shot, the ball is likely to hit the net. Plus, computer-controlled players make more mistakes when dealing with slices. All in all, Slice is a very useful tool in your arsenal, so don't sleep on it in tiebreak. Moving on to flat shots. You can perform it with X on DualSense or A button on Xbox controller. In many other tennis games, flat shots tend to be your default shot, but that's not the case in tiebreak. Flat shots are, as the name suggests, flat in their ball trajectory, which comes with more power and aggression, but also higher risk of failing. In tiebreak, flat shots performed when the ball is at low height result in hitting the net quite consistently. They are also limited in terms of angles as aiming close to the net will likely result in, you guessed it, hitting the net. So, as a result, I recommend using powered up flat shots very carefully. I typically go for flat shot when I am in already advantageous situation. For instance, when my opponent played the ball high or left it quite short. And even then, I tend to play highly powered flat shots through the middle of the net, where the net is lower. And then we have lobs. You can use lob by pressing Y on Xbox or triangle on PlayStation controller. There's not much to talk about lobs. Use them when your opponent is close to the net to get the ball behind them. Try to aim far to the baseline to make the distance between the opponent and the ball as long as possible. You also want to power your lob to a blue mark to ensure good length and angle on the shot. We will discuss the colors of the power-ups in the later sections of this video. Now, let's talk about drop shots. Drop shot is achieved by holding L1 together with square on PlayStation or left bumper plus X on Xbox controller. Drop shots can be a very useful shot type to finish the point, but they are quite difficult to get right. The more power you put into a drop shot, the lower the trajectory of the ball. At the same time, you want to place the ball as closely to the net as possible. And so, drop shots have this delicate balance between finding the right power and aim, depending on your position on the court. A typical mistake that you will be making when you just start with the game is holding left stick down when aiming with it. This habit from other tennis games will make you fail the shot a lot. Holding down the left stick basically makes the ball go heavily into the net. Instead, power your drop shot quite some and hold aim to left or right direction. Sometimes you may have to lean the stick up a bit to not hit the net. It all depends on your position on the court. With time, you will get the hang of it, so keep practicing and don't get discouraged. Generally, drop shots are useful when your opponent is far behind baseline or out on the side of the court. 
Drop shots can either result in winning the point directly or force opponents into making mistakes, which they do make quite a lot when dealing with drop shots. Especially CPU tends to hit the net or hit the ball out quite a lot. Since we are talking about playing at the net, we have to mention volleys. In tiebreak, volleys are a very useful tool for finishing points. On higher difficulties when playing against computer, it can be tiresome to finish your opponent if you are glued to the baseline. Computer-controlled tennis players in tiebreak are very fast and capable of strong defensive plays. And so sometimes I find it as a good idea to just push the net with my player to finish the point fast. Volleys are performed very similarly to ground strokes. You have to hold the corresponding shot button to perform the volley type you want. Unlike slices from the baseline, slice volleys are the risky type with low trajectory but a high point winning potential. I recommend you use slice volleys when the ball is relatively high above the net or when you are very close to it. In contrast, topspin volleys are very slow and bounce quite high. They are your defensive net play. And then we have flat volleys which are somewhat in the middle. Just like with ground strokes, you need to power up your volleys. This makes net play hard since the amount of time you have for reaction and powering up your volley is quite short. Weak volleys are also very slow and leave you in a vulnerable position. So you want to start holding the shot button as soon as enemy hits the ball to give yourself as much time as possible to charge your volley and win the point. Connected to volleys are overhead shots. Overhead shots happen when your opponent returns the ball with a defensive and very high trajectory or tries to lob you. Overheads are quite hard to hit well in tiebreak. I found the most success by either overpowering my overhead shots and not leaning left stick at all, or by timing overhead perfectly with blue mark and leaning left stick to the open side of the court. Either one works really well, and this is because overpowered overhead shots are way less accurate, so using left stick with them will almost certainly result in an out. So make sure to avoid it. And lastly, let's talk about serving in tiebreak, which works a bit differently than in other tennis games. In tiebreak, you serve by holding X or A button on your controller. You hold the button until the ball reaches its highest point, and then you release it. Choosing serve type is done through pressing left or right trigger before you start serving animation. So there is no serve with circle for kick serve or square button for slice like in other tennis games. Then you aim your serve by holding left stick during the serving animation. In tiebreak, you don't have to worry about pushing the stick too much into any direction or withholding it for too long. Your player will not miss their serve because of that. In fact, it's very hard to miss serve in tiebreak. It's not uncommon that both players will go with 100% serve accuracy. On the flip side, it's very hard to gain a substantial advantage with serve against computer. I figured out only one type of serve that results consistently in aces against CPU. And that is a slice serve close to the net to the outer side of the court as you can see on the screen. When timed well, it's almost a guaranteed ace. You can abuse this slice to the side serve to get easy points, but that makes the game so damn boring. I really don't recommend abusing this mechanic because it kind of misses the point of playing the game. When it comes to serving against human opponent, it's a little bit better because people actually make mistakes in their positioning. Unlike CPU, that is almost basically perfect. Overall, flat serves are not powerful enough to result in aces or force opponents into weak returns, and kick serves barely throw your enemy out of the court. So if you don't get satisfying serves in this game, don't worry too much about doing something wrong. It's not a you problem, it's just that the serving is the weakest part of gameplay in tiebreak. I typically prefer to serve to the outer side of the court to push opponents out of the court, setting me up for a topspin or flat shot to the opposite side of the court for a winner. Alright, now that we got all the shot types discussed, I think it's a good time to discuss trigger modifiers which are important part of tiebreaks gameplay. We have left trigger or L2 on PlayStation controller and 
right trigger or R2 for dual sense users. Left trigger is useful to sprint towards left direction and hit the ball from the left side of the player, which is a backhand for right hand dominant players. Right trigger is the same for the right side and results in forced animation of forehand for right handed players. Using either of these modifiers adds more aggression to the angle of your shot. Basically, the ball lands closer to the lines. They are, however, quite clunky to use. If you are like me, using specific trigger will result in brain farts and awkward animations. And this may result in you missing the shot completely. But there is a better and easier way. You can hold both triggers at the same time. Doing so forces your player to sprint to the ball. The game suggests that you should use it when you are far from the ball, but in all honesty I end up using both triggers all the time to reach the ball easier. There is stamina in the game, but currently it is hardly dropping at all, even when sprinting all the time. I also suggest that you hold both triggers for most of the shots to make angles of shots closer to the edges of the court. Unlike holding one trigger at a time, two triggers don't force you into any specific shot animation, making it so much better and easier to use. But bear in mind that holding triggers increases chances of missing your shots, and there are specific situations when you don't want to use triggers, which we will discuss in the next chapter. So now is a perfect moment to transition to the topic of powering up your shots and using modifiers correctly. Many of you who come from games like Topspin 2K25 will struggle at first in tiebreak. This is because the focus of gameplay is a little bit different. In tiebreak, timing of releasing your shot button does not seem to be important at all. I tried releasing the button perfectly before the ball hits the racket and also releasing it way too early or not releasing it at all. I did not notice any significant penalty to accuracy of my shots due to the timing differences. Instead, the focus is on choosing the right shot type, the ball height, the power of your shot, trigger modifiers and the angle of your shot. So how the power actually works? See, when you start holding the shot button, the power of shot increases. There are three stages of shot power in tiebreak. We have green bar, which is a normal shot power with great accuracy. We have blue bar, which is a strong shot with good accuracy. And lastly, we have the red bar, which is overpowered shot with low accuracy. Besides the strength and accuracy of your shots, power also impacts the trajectory of the ball and the length of your shot. The lower the power of your shot, the safer the trajectory of your stroke. Using for instance flat shot with high power in certain situations will almost certainly result in hitting the net. But on the flip side, using the same shot type but with barely charged power will put the ball above the net. And when it comes to the length of the shot, the higher the power, the farther the ball will go. If you want to push your enemy back with a slice, make sure to charge it up to full green bar or blue one. But if say you want to hit close tight angle with a top spin, you might be better off holding the shot button a little bit less. All right, now that you understand how power impacts your shots, we have to discuss using triggers in combination with power. As mentioned earlier, holding triggers makes the ball go closer to the line, with added risk of missing the shot. But since the risk is not too high, you will probably end up holding both triggers most of the time like I do. Trigger aggressive shots are best used with green or, optimally, with blue powered shots. This maximizes the speed of ball while not raising the risk of missing too much. What you definitely want to avoid doing is using triggers for overpowered shots. The reason is that hitting an overpowered shot while holding triggers will almost always go out or hit the net. So when your opponent plays a slower ball, you have two choices. Either power up your shot only until the bar gets blue while still holding the triggers or release triggers when the shot power becomes red. Personally, I prefer to rely on blue power plus holding triggers these shots are quite strong while maintaining good accuracy. In my opinion, overpowered shots have way too much risk for not enough benefit of added speed. So, that's all I got for you in this beginner's guide for tiebreak. I hope it helps you understand how specific mechanics work 
and how to use in-game controls to win matches in tiebreak. I am planning to make more guides, so if you liked this one, then hit that subscribe button to get notified about my future videos. And if you are new to tiebreak, let me know in the comment section what guides would you like to see for this game. Anyway, that's all from me in this video. Thanks for your time and I'll see you in the next one.